All right, so I thought it'd be a good idea to just go ahead and show everyone how to get this basic Overbridge VST working, uh, at least in Ableton Live, and then maybe y'all can figure out how to do it in your own DAWs. So first thing we're gonna do is open up the Overbridge engine, and you'll see we don't have any devices yet. I'm going to keep my buffer at 256 because this laptop is not the best. So the next step is turn on the device. So it's booting up and uh, there we go. And I'll log it to Mark II, measured, idle, ready to go. So we can close that, don't need to look at that. Our next step is we can go ahead and open the control panel and verify yes. So. The engine is seeing audio, that's good. So let's go ahead and open up Ableton Live. And you'll have to forgive that I have live light. I think it just came with a, my audio interface or some shit, I don't know. Anyway, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take Analog Rhythm, VST, drop it onto a MIDI track. And first thing we get is this little welcome screen. Welcome, we recommend the following is the only use case currently supporting Overbridge running in a DAW. Meaning this is the only way you should be doing this. Make sure the electron device is turned off when you connect the USB cable. That's a good rule of thumb to use pretty much for anything with the electron boxes, OctaTrack included. If you're gonna try and uh, do the USB disc mode and all that, don't have it turned on. Don't try and hot swap it because there's weird grounding shit that happens and it'll mess everything up. So just follow this thing and you'll be good. Uh, only one plugin instance per physical device. So don't drop like this thing on like five tracks and try and do a bunch of automation lane shit. That's gonna be no good, no bueno. Uh, the device should be sequenced or synced from within the DAW via the plugins track. Do not sequence or sync the device directly with it external MIDI cable. So again, just uh, make sure you're just using USB to connect the electron device. Use the audio output from the plugin when using the plugin. Do not take audio directly from your audio interface to your DAW. In other words, don't plug your cables from the uh, you know device into your actual sound card, your focus right or whatever you got just use the audio from the plugin. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So, all right, now that we've read the disclaimer, we get a, a little thing here. If I hit some buttons here, I've got some sounds. So let's go ahead and close this because we're not looking at that right now. Let's hit play on the DAW. Get that audio So, that's good. If we wanted to record the main mix, we would just, uh, we could just record that. We could also record the individual tracks. Um, so to do that, you'll have to forgive me here. I don't have enough tracks to actually record everything with live because <laughs> I'm not really a live user. But let's just make a couple more audio tracks. Let's ditch this MIDI track. How do you delete that? There we go. All right. So. To route audio from, if you go this top menu here, you're going to see analog rhythm. First little device here, right? So you click that. Then we just this second little menu here. You've got drum, kick drum, snare, the rim shot, and the clap channel, which obviously the choke groups get sent to a single channel. So those are both going to come through on one track. That's kind of important to remember too. So let's say this one's gonna be kick, then this one is gonna be snare, and let's just, let's leave it at that for right now. So let's go ahead and, um, where is it, option. I always forget how you select multiple things. Okay, so now we're gonna record from these two, and here we go. That audio coming from the plugin to these two audio tracks. This is the kick, and this is going to be that snare. And we've got just the rest of 
driver passing through this main avenue. So let's go ahead and stop that. Let's go ahead and disarm these. Let's mute this and let's take a look. There it is. There's the kick and there's the snare. So now we've got audio coming in and it's it's uh, in sync. Right, no latency because the latency um, delay compensation from the DAW is taking the VST and handling all of that shifting of audio for you. So that's it. That's how you do it in Ableton at least. So uh, if someone wants to see how to do this in Reason, I can do that for you too. But I can tell you right now, it does not work very well. Reason is not up to the task of running this VST. It's like super duper system uh, intensive and using that larger buffer. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff I could talk about with Reason, but for Ableton, this is how you do it. Set up all your tracks, route all your tracks to uh, the different inputs and uh, record arm them. And then that's it. You're done. So hopefully that'll help y'all and uh, get a lot of these dumb questions. They're not dumb questions. That's rude. Sorry. I, it's just, I made this mainly because it's like seeing the same question over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And obviously Electron's super busy getting ready for NAM, so they don't have time to make like a tutorial video for everyone. So I thought I would do something. So that's super brief, but I hope that helps y'all. Um, hit me up on the boards if you have any questions. Cool? Cool.